click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, after the derivation of the heat diffusion equation, we need to look into the steady state heat conduction through plain wall. So let us look into that. Steady state heat conduction to plane wall. See guys, we have seen previously how to derive the two general form of equation for Cartesian and polar coordinates. After that, with the set of assumptions, we have seen how to derive those general equation into the specific equations. Now here, the assumption that we are going to use, they are that the heat transfer is one dimensional then it is in the Cartesian coordinates, there is no heat generation and there is a steady state heat transfer. And the last one is, we will assume that the value of K, that is the thermal conductivity is constant throughout the material. These are my set of assumptions. Now let us consider there is a small wall and to the left there is the temperature Ts1, to the right there is the temperature Ts2. There is a hot fluid flowing to the left hand side of the wall and then the cold fluid flowing to the right hand side of the wall. The temperature of hot fluid is T infinity 1 and the value of heat transfer rate, the heat transfer coefficient is H1 over here. Similarly, the temperature of cold fluid is let's say T infinity 2 and the heat transfer coefficient is H2. So obviously, there is a drop from Ts1 that is the surface temperature to the left hand side of the wall to Ts2 which is the surface temperature of the right hand side of the wall. Now this drop will be linear. Why? We will see later. So in this case with all these assumptions and with the general equation that we had derived previously we will left with this equation that is d by dx k dt by dx equal to 0. Now, if I integrate it twice, I shall get equation something like this. That is T, which is a function of x, is equal to C1x plus C2. Now, since we have got two constants, we need two boundary conditions. As we had seen previously, the boundary condition 1 will be at x equal to 0. So, see here, as we had seen previously, the boundary condition 1, that is at x equal to 0, means at the left hand side surface of the wall the temperature is Ts1 so that makes my boundary condition 1 at x equal to 0 T0 now 0 is at x equal to 0 temperature is Ts1 similarly the boundary condition 2 will be to the right hand side when the value of x equal to L my temperature is Ts2 so that makes my second boundary condition now I need to put the first and the second boundary condition in the general solution over here. If I substitute the same, I shall get equation like T of 0 which is equal to C1 into 0 plus C2. Now here I have substituted the first boundary condition. So I can write the boundary condition 1 will yield me C2 equal to Ts1. Similarly, with the second boundary condition, if I put then my equation becomes T of L equal to C1 L plus C2 which is equal to Ts2. So now this is nothing but my second boundary condition. So if I start solving, I shall get the value of C1 as Ts2 minus Ts1 upon L. Now these two constants we are going to put in the general solution. So finally my equation will become T of x is equal to C1 that is Ts2 minus Ts1 upon L into x plus ts1 so i am giving this as equation number one see here we can see that the temperature depends linearly on the dimension x because the power of x is one that is what i was talking about see i can join this two point by any means i can join this linearly or some parabolic curve or some cubic curve but I need to join this linearly because my temperature in this case depends linearly on dimension x. So this here we get the temperature distribution in case of steady state heat transfer. So this equation talks about the temperature distribution in our case. 
Now let us see if I use the Fourier's equation which is Q dash of x where Q dash is nothing but the rate of heat transfer. which is given as minus k a dt by dx. Now a here is the cross section area. If I differentiate this equation with respect to x, I can find the dt by dx here. See my differentiation here will yield me dt by dx is equal to, see only the first parameter is having the parameter x over here. See if I differentiate this temperature t with respect to x dt by dx then I shall I shall find see here only the first parameter is having variable x so the differential will only give me ts2 minus ts1 upon l see this will be constant so if I differentiate this I shall get 0 over here now this is what I have put in this main equation then what will I have I will have q dash of x is equal to this k into a which I have written over here upon l. Now this l will come over here and then to compensate the negative sign what I will do I will simply change my temperatures. See here with the differential we are getting Ts2 minus Ts1. To negate this negative sign I will write this as Ts1 minus Ts2. So finally we will get the value of heat transfer rate in this case as Ts1 minus Ts2 into K upon L. As we had seen previously, this can also be written as Ts1 minus Ts2 upon L upon Ka. Now this L upon Ka is nothing but your thermal resistance in case of conduction. See now the derivation that we had for the heat transfer rate in case of single wall can also be done without the use of general equation. So let us see the alternate method for the same. Again what we have done we have considered a wall where the temperature to the left hand side is T1 to the right hand side we have got T2 the conductivity is K the cross section area is A and the length is L. So here I will simply write down the Fourier's law which is Q dash of x equal to minus k dt by dx. Now let us look at the Fourier's law. The Q dash of x is equal to minus k dt by dx. Now here we will simply go for the rearrangement of the variables. So with the help of Fourier's law we can say that Q dash of x is equal to minus k dt by dx. Now here we will simply go for the rearrangement of the variables. So let us take this dx to the left hand side of the equal to sign then we will have k dash of x into dx is equal to minus k a dt. Now again using the same boundary conditions which we have seen previously that is at x equal to 0 my temperature is t1 and at x equal to l my temperature is t2. If I use these two boundary conditions and if I integrate this equation I shall get something like this that is integral 0 to l. So why 0 to l because my x is standing from 0 to l. Q dash of x dx is equal to integral now corresponding to x equal to 0 my temperature was t1. So hence my lower limit of integral will be t1 over here and then the higher limit of integral will be t2 over here. And in the bracket we have minus k dt. So if I go for normal procedure of integration then I can finally say that we will again get the value of q dash of x is equal to t1 minus t2 upon l upon ka. So which is nothing but the thermal resistance of the conduction. Now this is the same equation we had got previously. But in the previous case we could have found the temperature distribution also from the main general solution. Here we will only get the heat transfer rate. You can choose the either method but the first method is more equipped to find the temperature distribution for any given case. That is it in this topic. Here we have discussed basically the steady state heat conduction through plane wall and we have tried to derive the temperature distribution and heat transfer rate in this case with this many assumptions. Thank you for watching this video. Please stay tuned with Ikeda. Please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.